Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard tab you may set up your core inputs, see the core financial by years and main charts, which are revenue breakdown, profitability, cash flow and cumulative cash flow by years. So let's start from the launch date. So here you can set up the launch date of your business. It can be, for example, March 21. So if you go to any other time series tab, you may see that all the calculations will start from the March 21. So let's start from core inputs. First of all, you should set up the annual marketing expenses by years. It can be, for example, 50,000 with growth of $100,000 each next year. This is a main driver. Uh, because using these market expenses and customer acquisition cost, we are generating new customers or buyers, which is the driver of the business. So after we set up these annual marketing expenses, we should set up the customer acquisition cost by years. It can be $10 per customer and additionally $1 each next year. Using these two drivers, you can calculate new customers or buyers in our marketplace. You may see them here in gray. The next uh, very important KPI, monthly churn rate. So all the customers tend to churn. So you should set up some monthly churn rate. It can be very low, for example, 3% or up to 25%, for example, for some marketplaces. So you may see the customers churn by years. This is total for the year. And finally, as a result of this section, you may see the active customers. So this is as of the end of the year. So how much customers you will have, for example, in the end of 25. The next very important KPI is buyer to seller ratio. So using this ratio, and we know how much active customers we'll have each month, we can calculate the active sellers. This is also by the end of the year. So for example, if you use one to 10, we know that at the end of 25, we'll have 1,088 sellers. The next section uh, we need to input uh, to know the amount of orders each month. So first of all, we can set up repeat purchase ratio. So how much purchases will repeat, how much customers will repeat their order. It can be very low number, it can be just zero if you don't need to repeat any orders from new customers, or it can be, I don't know, so for example, 1% and additional 1% each next year. Then we have count of orders per month per repeat customer. It can be, for example, two plus one additional order each next year. So we have orders from new customer, which means that each new customer will make a new order and orders from repeat customers. So some portion of the customers will repeat their orders on a monthly basis. And finally, we know how much orders we have from all the customers by months. And this number, this is total by years. On the revenue assumption step, you may set up the main revenue drivers for two revenue streams which is subscription revenue and commission revenue. If you don't have one of this revenue stream, you can just clean up the drivers and you will have, for example, commission revenue in this case, or you can set clean up all the commission revenue inputs. So in this case, you'll have only subscription revenue. So before on the dashboard, we define it, the amount of active sellers, active customers and total orders. So the next step is to set up the monthly subscription fee per active customer and per active seller. It can be flat by years or it can be for example $5 and plus $1 each next year. The same idea for active seller. By knowing amount of active customers and active sellers by months and monthly subscription fee, we easily calculate by multiplying one driver another, we know the subscription revenue by months. The next revenue stream is commission revenue inputs. 
we know how much orders we have each month. So the next step, we should set up the average order value. Can be, for example, $250 plus $50 each next year. The next step is to allocate order by up to five order types. If you don't really need any order types, you can set up 100 and clean everything else. So you have only one product type. But if you need all of them, you can set up up to five product types. You can print everything which you need here, the names of product types, and you can set up the location. It should be always in total 100% for each year. And product five is just balancing the amount. So if you set up 80% here, for example, you have minus 40% for product type five, which doesn't make sense. So you may see the cell as red. So you should always keep the total amount 100 and each driver should be positive. Then we have two types of commissions, which is fixed commission per order or variable commission per order. Fixed commission per order means that, for example, we take $1 per each order. Very easy and simple. And second type, variable commission. So we can take, for example, 10% from each order value. If your order value is $100, you have 10%, which is $10 per each order. And also you can combine this. So for example, you can have 50 cents of fixed commission per order ABC type and 1% of order value, which means $1. It can, or it can be just, just fixed commission without any variable commission, or it can be variable commission without fixed. So all combinations of commissions are available here. And finally, in the income statement, in the total revenue section, you may see the subscription revenue amount by months and commission revenue amount by months. On the seasonality setup tab, you may allocate your marketing expenses by months within the year. So previously on the dashboard, we set up the annual marketing expenses. So this step will help you to allocate these amounts by months. So if you don't need any seasonality for marketing expenses, you can set up just one divided by 12 and copy and paste in all yellow cells. So in this case, you have everything flat. But if you need some seasonality, you can set up, for example, 10, 15, 5, 10, 20, 3, 5, 4, 4, 4, 2. And the December will balance. So in total, it should be always 100%. So December will show the rest amount to have 100. So if you set up something very weird, for example, 25%, December will be minus 5% and you will see it by red. It shouldn't be the case because the marketing expenses should be always positive. So you should keep December always positive. 15% and in this case, everything is positive. Hope that makes sense. Also on the dashboard, you may set up your working capital assumptions. There are two main sections, which is accounts receivable and accounts payable. Accounts receivable applied to revenue and accounts payable applied to COX. You have up to four time frames to set up from 0 to 30 days, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90 days and 90 to 120 days. So in total for each column, this should be 100%. So if you set up 20, 20 and 20, the final time frame will show you the last part to have in total 100%, which is in this case 40%. Or it can be 50% first month, 50% second month, zero and zero. So if you go to the balance sheet, you may see the accounts receivable calculation based on the AR revenue assumptions and accounts payable calculations based on Cox accounts payable assumptions. income statement tab, you may see your main components of your profit and loss, which is total revenue, total cost of goods sold, gross margin, total variable expenses, total admin salaries and wages, total fixed expenses, ABDA, 
depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, your corporate tax, and as a result, net profit after tax. Please note that each category has its own subcategories, so you may click on this plus button and see the detailization, for example, for fixed expenses, or for variable expenses, or for example, for the revenue. On the cash flow statement, you may see your cash flow broken down by cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. The same information you may see on the cash flow statement in a direct method, operating, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. Just easier to see the information here. And the balance sheet will show you the breakdown of your current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities and equity by its subcategories. The summary of three statements you may find on the financial statement summary tab. On the top you have income statement broken down by five years and the selected year which you can change here broken down by months. Below you may see the same information on the chart form. The next set of tables and charts will show you the balance sheet main KPIs broken down by five years and selected year by months. And the last part will show you the cash flow statement breakdown for the five years and for 12 months for the selected year as well as charts with the same information. On the sources and users tab, you may see the main sources of cash and main uses of this cash. So on the top, you may see the funded structure, which is broken down by debts and equity amounts. And on the charts, you may see the actual breakdown. Also, you may see the jeering or debt to equity ratio here. The next report will show you the sources of funds broken down by different debts or grants and equity broken down by funders, series A, B and C. Just more detailed view of finding structure on the top. And finally, below we may see the report, which is very detailed view of sources of cash, which is revenue receipts, debts and equity and users broken down by COX, variable expenses, fixed expenses, salaries, debt repayments, interest repayments, corporate tax paid, capital expenditure and finally the cash in bank. Also you may change the amount of months which is one year, two, three, four and five years. So for example for the year five you may take a look on the sources and on the users. And below on the chart you may see this report in the graphical form, which is more easier to review. On the financial chart step, you may review your main financial KPIs in two sets of charts. On the charts on the left, you may see 24 months and on the chart to the right, you can see the five years broken down by months. On the top sets of charts, you may see the revenue breakdown by subscription revenue and commission revenue. The next set of charts will show you the cash balance by months. The next couple of charts will show you the operating cash flow broken down by cash inflow and cash outflow. The next chart will show you the ABDA breakdown, which is revenue, COX and OPEX parts and the ABDA as a yellow line. The next charts will show you the EBIT and finally on the last set of charts you may see the gross merchandise volume by months. On the operational charts you may see the main operational KPIs in two sets of charts for 24 months and for the five years broken down by months. So on the first couple of charts you may see the average revenue per day and average OPEX per day which is blue line and orange line. The next couple of charts will show you the workforce productivity, which is revenue per employee and OPEX per employee. And finally, on the last couple of charts, you may see the active sellers and buyers break down by months, where orange columns will show you the active customers or buyers. And on the blue, you may see the active sellers.
On the benchmark KPIs tab, you may see the industry benchmark KPIs and compare with numbers which are generated by the model. So we have gross margin percentage, contribution margin percentage, LTV to CAC ratio, customer lifetime value and customer acquisition cost. So on the yellow sales, you may set up your average industry benchmark and in this white sales, you may see the numbers uh, calculated by the model and by the drivers which you input inside. And here on the charts, you may see as orange the industry specific KPI and as a blue value, the value calculated by the model. On the top revenue tab, you can see the revenue breakdown by rooms revenue, events revenue, bar revenue and restaurant revenue. Also you may see the breakdown of absolute values by years and percentage allocation by years. The same information you may see on the charts below, so here you may see the percentage allocation and the absolute values allocation. On the revenue depths and monthly run rate charts, you may see the detailed year, which you can change here. You can see the absolute values and percentage allocation of your revenue streams. On the revenue bridge, you may see the main drivers of your revenue growth between two years. The years are changeable also, so you can set up starting from 2021 to 2023. So on the left side of the chart, you may see 2021 revenue. On the right side, you may see 2023 revenue amount. And in between, you may see the main components of your revenue growth. On the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with a total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab, you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here, cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model, there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information, we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports, 
and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color, you have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory, and everything which is needed for the report reporting. Additionally, you have Contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, the, on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories, this hire and fire date, this annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount, starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly ta taxes related to the payroll. Another option that would be admin account which will start in April which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, then 4, 6, 8 and 10 headcounts. 3% of annual salary gross, 5% of monthly bonus and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers which is 2 for the year number 1. 2020, starting from year 2021, you have 4, then 6, 8, and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these two, in this case 4 that counts, calculation of bonuses, and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, total salaries and wages. And here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the COX tab you can set up up to 5 COX categories and drivers for them. So on the yellow cells you may set up the names, it can be COX, component, one or any other name which you would like to use and you have three options of how to define it as a percentage of total revenue as a percentage of subscription revenue or as a percentage of commission revenue if you have these two options so let's pretend cost component will forecast as a percentage of total revenue so first year it can be 10 percent nine eight seven six so below you can see the calculation for these COX line items and in the income statement under total COX subsection you may see five categories uh, of COX broken down by months. On 
the variable expenses tab, you may set up your variable expenses line item names as well as drivers. So here you have the categories or line item names. Uh, you can see up to six categories. One is predefined, which is gray marketing expenses. This line item we already set up on the dashboard and we can see the marketing expenses as a percentage of revenue by years calculation, which is gray. And you have up to five placeholders to set up other variable expenses line items as a percentage of total revenue. So it can be, for example, bank fee, which is in 2021 can be 2%, 2022 can be 1.8%, 1.6, 1 1.4, and 1.2%. 1 Below you may see the calculation based on these assumptions. And in the income statement, under variable expenses subcategory, On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, you have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two B weekly payments within the months, $500 multiplied by two, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20, with amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates, because this is just one-time fee. And you may see that office setup will happen in February 20, with this amount. Another option, insurance, let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model, and it can happen monthly, with $1,000 per month. Is five percentage of growth first year, three percentage of growth second year, two percentage of growth third, and one percentage year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for five percent, which is fifty dollars. And starting from January 22, it will grow for three percent, which is additionally thirty-two dollars. Another option: quarterly. You may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually. In this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again, with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months. 
starting from February till December 24. For each expense type you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also in income statement you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. On the CapEx tab, you may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of examples. So, for example, office development with purchase date of February 20 with spending of $10,000. And you also can input payment delay. What does it mean? Let me set up two months, for example. It means that this amount will be accrued in February because of purchase date is February, but paid development expenses will be in April 20 for this office development. And you will have some balance of CapEx accounts payable for two months. Let me give you another example, other development expenses. Let's say March 20, $5,000 is zero payment delay. This means that this amount is accrued in March and paid in March as well. The total amount of development expenses you may find in Assets tab. By default it has useful time for five years for the calculation of depreciation. You may find calculation of depreciation for development expenses in here. Here you may also find capital expenditure and closing net book value. Additionally, you have up to six placeholders for other assets, for example, other assets with useful time of 10 years with cost of $25,000 and with launch date in April. You may find it in here, you can see capital expenditure you may see book depreciation by months for this amount and you may see closing net book value. The total amount of depreciation you may find in income statement. On the cash flow you may find cash flow from investing activities for these assets and on the balance sheet you may find fixed assets amount under non-current assets and capex prepayment and capex payables as well. the capitalization table you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder 1, founder 2. So total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000, for founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $16,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input 
some amounts for series B and series C. The same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt you are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses will be equal each month. In case if you select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input an amount of the debt, the launch date, term will be 60 months and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments no terms in terms of interest so all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab calculations for the debt number one debt number two debt number three total debts with grants these calculations impacts income statement interest expenses the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments and on the balance sheet we have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have euro as an output. And for this case, you can set up currency exchange rate. This is 1.2, for example. In this case, you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros, and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally, you have denomination, which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example, you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000 you can select millions you may see that now it is in million dollars you can set also billions or without any denomination additionally you have corporate tax setup you can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement I hope you enjoyed my video Thanks for reviewing this and uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.